and sometimes people call it a medical miracle. Mm -hmm. And we seem to accept that. It's an unexplained event. So well, if it happens. Hopefully, hopefully <laughs> um, other unexplained events will be um, have more powerful messages for people going forward. Have you, have you like, talked to any, anybody else who's had, had these kinds of experiences? Uh, one other one, but very briefly. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a, almost a mention in passing. I, I just did never really wanted to put any thoughts into my head from someone else's experience that, that may color. That might change what you. Might change it. You know, yeah. someplace I'm going to get, you know, filed in the back of my mind someplace and, and came out not as being 100% my recollection of it or my experience with it. And uh, I was adamant about it being strictly my words. But I mean, these 20,000 words in this book is a very short book. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, can, I could show you the manuscript, the original manuscript that I typed out, and it's very close to the same 20,000 words that are here in the book. So as I recalled it, I, I wrote it down, and that's how it's presented. But since it's been... But since it's been published, um, I mean, now that you've gotten your story out the way you wanted to, have you uh, gotten in, have other people sought you out? Uh, a few have asked. Mm -hmm. uh, a few have taken the time to write reviews, as as you may have seen a few. Um, but I don't know. They, many people seem to retreat. Right? That I kept this story to myself for twenty one years, a long time. That is a long time. And up until the time that I spoke to the neuropsychologist who was quoted on the front of the book, I would have kept it to myself for another 21 years, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, he indicated that people would be happy to hear the story, to learn, to you know, get something out of it. So uh, he kind of convinced me to write the book, and that's why I gave him credit for that on the front of the book having done that. And, and has, has writing the book, the process of writing the book, changed your perspective of this experience? No, it hasn't changed my perspective of the experience. It has changed my perspective of the process. <laughs> the process of writing? <laughs> We're both laughing. When I first, <laughs> when I first approached this whole thought. I thought, uh, number one, who would want to hear about my life? Well, that's, that's what I was, went through. Who, who would be interested in hearing about, you know? Uh, and after that, I thought, oh, sitting down and writing enough words for a book, oh, that's going to be tough. Daunting. <laughs> well, I actually sat down on 9-11, which was the anniversary of my accident. It happened uh. on 9-11, 94. <laughs> And on that, on that day, on that anniversary, I sat down and wrote half this book in one sitting. It, it, just, it just all came flowing out mm -hmm, of me. Mm -hmm. um, Before we get into the whole thing about writing, publishing, and marketing, let me read a review. Okay. okay. A fascinating read that is both inspired and inspiring, A Flight Without Wings, My Experience with Heaven, will prove to be an enduringly valued addition to personal and community library metaphysical studies reference collections and supplemental studies reading lists. It should be noted that A Flight Without Wings, My Experience with Heaven, is also available, you know, obviously. I know, I know what review that is. Is that the Midwest Book Review? Uh, that came from the Midwest it does, Book it Review. It probably says it here uh, somewhere. It's but fairly well-known. Uh, but I mean the fact yeah. that it's being included where people study these phenomenon. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess you would say I'm impressed with that. Yeah. Uh, also very satisfying. Yeah. That um, those the, the, the different avenues uh, have been able to gather something from it. Those people that study, you know, metaphysical studies, and some people who study religion or spirituality. Uh, all the different all the different avenues seem to be getting something out of it. Well, it's very satisfying to me. 
Well, the only experience that personal experience I have with this, and it's not me, um, my first husband was in a terrible automobile accident, head-on collision. He was in a Volkswagen. The other person was in a, a, um, a 1960 Chevy. Okay, so not a fair fight. And uh, he described, he said, I could see the accident from above. I saw myself in the car. I saw my leg trapped in the car, and then I was on the ground. So that's not the same common, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, it's not just... common. Yeah. Maybe you hear that oftentimes mm -hmm. with anyone who experiences something like this is uh, some separation of their soul, if you will, yeah. uh, from the body yeah. and um, looking at it from a different angle, different perspective. <laughs> I, I have a sense of, a weird sense of humor, and I, I keep thinking of the fact that, well, if you get hit hard enough, your soul would be knocked out of your body, and then what do you do? <laughs> oh, so. Come back here. <laughs> so, so um, you self-publish? Uh, well, it, it was somewhere in between self-publishing and traditional publishing. Yeah, tell it, us about that. A, uh, it's, it's a... Uh, it's, it's not self-published as such, uh, it, but it's a print-on-demand. Mm -hmm. So although you, you wind up paying fees for certain organizations, certain uh, artwork and composition and, and so forth, uh, you know, you're not having to pay a traditional publisher to print thousands and thousands of books or to commit to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, obviously, you still pay a fee for whatever you have done in writing. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. There's a fee for everything. Uh, but you don't have to, as I said, you don't have to find someone who's willing to uh, put the money up for thousands of copies to be printed. Right. And, and I don't know, possibly uh, sit someplace until the book is marketed or uh, so right. forth, enough to use up those copies. So these, no. these are printed on demand. Right. Now, do you have a Facebook page? I have a Facebook page under, under my name, Brian McLaughlin. Right, and, uh, and, and you have a website. And on Twitter, I'm on uh, at VAM Playa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a website that has all of that information on it. Okay. And, uh, one can find places to purchase the book or information about me or even a snippet of the, of the book itself to, to read. And um, they can take it from there. Yeah, that's yeah. that's the best the we can do, one. right? So, one. because you had this <clears throat> incredible experience and you wrote about it, what would you say to uh, what? What's your best advice to a writer? Because you uh, obviously were not a writer, neither was I no. when I started. And no. what would you tell a writer to not help them advice. on the on the journey? Well, I I would I would first uh, suggest that they do the same thing I did, and that is to gather whatever information they can. <coughs> and there's plenty available on the internet. Um, talk to other writers. I went and saw you at a, at a writer's group, mm -hmm. gathered information, and, and, and used it going forward. You, you, you know, you put it all together and, and you use it. I think you find that um, if you do your homework, you do due diligence with the information, you can find people willing to help at a reasonable price and uh, not take advantage of you or of your naivete. And you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. Just persevere. Perseverance. That's what everyone says. Yeah. Well, it's a, an amazing story, and I wish you the best Thank of you. luck getting it out. And I know that you're going to meet uh, some very interesting people <laughs> in <Yes>. the future. <laughs> Thanks, very Brian. Good. Thanks, Linda. Great to it was see great. you again.